All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I implemented a uh, basic scripting language in uh, Godot script or GD script, whatever you want to call it. I'm very new to uh, Godot. I think you call it Godot. I'm very new to it. I don't even really know how to pronounce it yet. But um, it really inspired me to like uh, pick work back up on this game idea I've had for a long time. And one of the essential uh, features of it is that it needs to have a scripting language built into the game. And I will show you in a bit uh, how that works. Actually, let's, let's, let me just show you that right now. So if I start the game, uh, as soon as I start typing, like a console appears and I can uh, type something like build server. And it will, uh, it will build me this server right here uh, at the center of the uh, view. And uh, you can see here in the console that there's some uh, uh, some stuff going on. It creates some tokens and it creates an AST, which is uh, called an abstract syntax tree. So um, the way that I did that, I've done that before, and there will be a card popping into view right now uh, of how I did this uh, before in Python on another channel. Um, but I'll, I'll run you through this code real quick, and then you can see how... Uh, if you ever need a scripting language, then you can see how to do this. So we need to set up some variables. Um, the current command, uh, the current uh, lex, which is basically like um, uh, this string that gets uh, larger as, as uh, lexing is going on through your scripting language. pbuff uh, is set to false. It stands for if you start an actual multi-line program, because the console input in this case is basically like uh, like an interpreter, like Python's interpreter. It interprets every line. Unless you start uh, a program, we will see how to do that in a, in a second. You need a tokens array and you need an AST array. The AST is the abstract syntax tree. You might want to Google that if you want to know more about it. Basically, it converts a program into a logical tree that you can execute. Uh, you need to define the keywords that are built into your language. So in my case, it's uh, these ones. Um, and then, okay, so on the ready function, I insert uh, a, a little prompt because uh, it's nice. And then here in the input event, um, when enter is pressed, we insert a new line, uh, set in input as handle. There's a trick that I uh, learned on Reddit from some user. Um, and then uh, we can insert uh, a prompt again. And then we hand off the command to the Lexa. Now, before we do that, let's just uh, go uh, here for a second. Uh, it basically, like uh, what this does, uh, barring a few uh, characters like space, backspace, and enter, it just constantly adds whatever uh, character you're typing at that moment to the command uh, variable which is then handed off here to the lexer in uppercase. So the lexer is where you create your tokens, uh, which you need to uh, build your abstract syntax tree. Uh, we start off with an empty string, and then uh, in the input, which is this command variable um, right here, in, uh, we loop over all the words that are um, in this line split by the space, okay? Then you loop over each character in the words. Now you can also do this with regular expressions. I don't know exactly how those work in GD script, but um, it is it is basically you read everywhere that like lexing a, a scripting language with regular expressions is a bad idea. So you just do it to um, character by character, which is what we are doing in this this particular for loop. Okay, so we add the next character to our lex string. I'm printing some debug information, which is like exactly what you see here. Okay. Now, then you can say like, okay, if um, if I encounter the string program uh, during this loop, <coughs> sorry, we uh, set the program buffer to true. And if we encounter end program in this string, we set the program buffer to false. That just says that uh, if the program buffer is false, then we hand over to the parser after this function runs, so after those two loops. But if it doesn't, then we just keep it in, in uh, memory. And we can, in between program and end program, we can write some uh, script, kind of like uh, Fortran. It's inspired by Fortran. Okay, so um, 
this is where like uh, the real sort of uh, meat happens at the moment. This is where you get any other keyword that isn't program or end program and you add it to your tokens in the form of a dictionary. Uh, so you give uh, you give it the ID keyword and the value of Lex, which is this string right here that are, you are building up. Okay. Now, uh, if what you are seeing is not uh, coming uh, from this keyword array, right? Then we are now just assuming that we're dealing with arguments. Uh, that needs to change later on, but for now, yes. Uh, so what we do is we uh, add a token to our token array with the ID argument and the value um, of Lex minus uh, one character, which is the new line. We don't want the new line. Um, let's assume that we're dealing with a keyword here, not with uh, uh, full scripts. So we hand off to the parser. We just print our tokens, which uh, is this line right here in the console. You can see I have I, I, I type the command build server. So I have a keyword called build and an argument called server. Uh, now we, we are building an AST, so an abstract syntax tree, which has nodes in it. So we need to uh, set the current node to an empty string. And then we uh, loop over all the tokens in the token array. In the, Yeah, the token array. Uh, if the ID of this uh, current token is a keyword, then the value will be the, um, the value. So in this case, build, right? And the current node will also be the value. And then we append to the AST the value and an empty array. Uh, if uh, the ID is an argument, we uh, call this function at AST node with the current node, which is uh, um, build at the moment, and the value, which is uh, what we what we added here, so server. And then uh, we, uh, we well, okay, let's go over this one first. Um, at AST node just basically loops over the AST, sees if uh, it can find the parent you're passing in, and if so, it appends to that uh, array the node that you're passing in, okay? And then it calls run. Run is this function right here. It passes in the global AST uh, per default, but you can over also override that, which we will need to do later once we uh, uh, call this uh, function recursively. So um, we loop over the AST. Um, if we find something of the type dictionary, which in most cases we will, uh, we um, make a call. So call, basically, it's like you pass in a string and it will call that um, method as a string or that string as a method, basically. So in this case, k to lower, which is build, and uh, all of the arguments that we uh, um, send in. So that is a server in this case. And indeed, we have here a function called build. So basically, this AST uh, um, right here, build as the key, server as the argument, as the value, it basically maps to this function right here. And right here, we're just doing uh, whatever we uh, need to do for our particular game. So in my case, it's like, okay, I need the root, I need the camera, then I need to load. This is kind of fun because uh, I have this um, extra scene. Uh, let me just uh, open that called uh, server. That's basically the, um, the, the little cube we saw when I executed the thing. It, it does some things on its own. This is basically where your game mechanics come into play. Um, and so uh, it has these uh, the, the arguments. So server was the argument. It's just type, and it just gets it loads that uh, resource um, that scene dynamically, basically. So uh, I can build more of these things with different names, and and it will all just kind of work out by itself. Uh, if it can't find it, resource not found. Just error checking. You know, this is just the basics of it. And so that is kind of like my beginning of a scripting language in uh, my game. And so while I have you here, I might as well just kind of explain a little bit more about the game itself because it's not really meant to be a tutorial. Like I'm just kind of going to um, motivate myself to finally finish this game for once um, by making videos about it, I guess. 
and um, it's going to be a real-time strategy game where the basics of it is like uh, you are dumped into a network like you you start as a player in a network with nothing and you build up your own um, sort of technology grid so like uh, like you build servers, you build routers, you build uh, uh, firewalls, all that stuff. And the aim of the game is to protect yourself while hacking other players. And it's a real-time strategy game multiplayer over the network. And <clears throat> so basically you have to shield... Like, okay, so you as a player uh, are also an IP address on this network and you also are vulnerable. If another player gets to you directly, you're basically out of the game. You're you're hacked, right? But you you build up this protection grid around you by by building servers around you and building servers around that and building firewalls in between and laying connections and and so in in this way, like it will take the other player longer to reach you. But I wanted to make it kind of cool for more advanced players, which is why I wanted to have the the scripting language in there. So. The aim of the game is to be, or not, not the aim of the game, but the um, the sort of like advanced level of the game is where you are making your own scripts to automate all the tasks that you would normally do with the graphical user interface. So the graphical user interface will be the actual slower way of doing things because if you can write the scripts in the game, or if you can share and download scripts with other people, then you can be way faster in, in uh, building stuff and in uh, performing certain tasks that might take a user longer to do by clicking. And also, so once I have this uh, fully worked out, all of the graphical user interfaces will just be kind of like a shell on top of all these scripts and um, automatable commands. Uh, and, and so if you click a button in a, in a graphical user interface, basically under the hood it will just be calling one of the scripts and all these scripts are modifiable or interchangeable and so you can get really advanced in the game by becoming very familiar with the scripting language and very familiar with the mechanics of the game so you can automate the entire thing and that's kind of like the idea I have and hopefully like pretty soon I will have um, kind of like a, a playable demo very bare bones because this is going actually a lot faster than I am used to because I had this idea for this game for many years and I've worked on it a couple of times in various different engines going all the way back to like dark basic and blitz basic uh, to even like um, uh, I can't even remember what the engine was called but like there was a popular C++ engine out at the time as well and uh, then later in unity but for some reason, I never really got to the stage where I actually imp implemented the scripting language. And now, now that I'm kind of like there, um, it's going a lot faster. I've been working on this for about two days now, and it's um, it's really shaping up. So hopefully, I will have a playable demo soon. Like, and uh, that's about it for me now. So I will see you in another video.